where you've got your gun, now let's wade through all the confusion about ammunition. I'm Kevin Michalowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. In this video, we're going to break it down to the two most important things you need to know about ammunition. It is very confusing, but there are two things, and then we'll get you started on the road to choosing the right ammo for personal defense. If you're new here, simply owning a gun does not prepare you for armed self-defense. The U.S. Concealed Carry Association provides you education and training to make sure you can avoid danger and save lives. And before we get into this, let me let you know that we will be giving away a gun. You will have the chance to win a gun by the end of this video, but you got to watch through the end of the video to get those details for that chance to win the gun. So let's talk a little bit about ammo. It's very confusing from lead round nose to full metal jacket to jacketed hollow point to um, frangible to ballistic tip. There are millions of people buying ammo and thousands of ammo manufacturers and dozens of different kinds of ammo, all sorts of stuff going on out there. Understand this folks, it's all marketing, okay? Caliber is the diameter of the bore. That's the bore is the barrel where the bullet comes out. So I won't use this little 22 caliber to talk about caliber. We'll use something a little bigger. Here's a 40 caliber freedom seed. Check it out. There are some basic components to every cartridge. First of all, if you're calling this a bullet, that's wrong. This is a cartridge. It includes a bullet, that is the projectile that flies out and does the job. Inside this case or casing, there's a big debate whether it's a casing or a case. This holds the magic fire powder, the gunpowder inside here. And at the end is a primer. The primer is struck by the firing pin. The primer contains a very small amount of explosive material. It explodes, it ignites the gunpowder, which burns at a rapid rate, so fast some people think it explodes. And the burning, whoo, we got it. This one tried to get away. The burning creates a volume of gas which pushes the bullet down the bore, down the barrel, onto target. So those are the basics of what a, what a cartridge, what ammunition is. Here on the table, we have everything from 45 ACP, old, fat, and slow. Kind of reminds you of someone, doesn't it? And I did this. I grabbed this type of setup here, this, this full star clip of 45 ACP cartridges, just to show you how confusing it can be. Colt 45 ACP, automatic Colt pistol, but this is set up for a revolver. So you can use ammunition, which was originally designed to go in an auto-loading pistol in revolvers. It depends on what the gun is quote unquote chambered for. So when you buy your gun, you need to buy the right type of ammunition. There are hundreds of calibers out there, but we just picked out a few of the most common self-defense calibers from 22 long rifle, 32 H&R Magnum. Nine millimeter is probably the most popular. It's, it's almost ubiquitous. It's out there everywhere. 40 caliber Smith & Wesson and 45 ACP are the ones you're going to see the most. 380 ACP we don't have out here, but that's really, truly just a shortened version of the nine millimeter round. There's five or six different types of nine millimeter. The one we're talking about, the most common one in use in the world right now is nine millimeter by 18. That is nine millimeter Parabellum or nine millimeter Luger designed by George Luger back in 1908 or, or something like that. It's been around for quite a long time. So I told you to solve the confusion. There's just two things that ammunition needs to do. First, we'll take this one. This, check out right at the end right there. That is what we call a full metal jacket. That is a training or target load. We are using that for training. It's easy to make, it's cheap and fast to load, it is less expensive than most other ammunition, but when it hits, I don't know how to put this subtly, when it hits human flesh, when it hits something that is predominantly liquid, it really does nothing. It just stays in one piece, flies right on through where it's going, penetrates incredibly deeply, and doesn't transfer much of its energy into the target. So it's just a target load, you just want to see where you're hitting, it's, it's poking holes and stuff. That's what it does. Most commonly used self-defense ammunition is this, the jacketed hollow point. This is the standard commonly used self-defense ammunition. And the goal of the jacketed hollow point is to transfer its energy into the target, to go into the human flesh, go into the liquid base material and stop therefore transferring all of its energy into that target so it hits a little bit harder and it does a little bit more damage. 
This is the end result of shooting a jagged hollow point into ballistic material. We use ballistic gel that mimics human flesh and this is what we get when it comes out of there. You notice that it opens up, it is wider than the 40 caliber when we started and the petals peel back and that causes some more internal damage and this opening up stops inside the target. That's what we want. We would like to have penetration of about 13 inches and then the bullet to stop inside the target because then you know all of the energy from that bullet has stopped inside the target. So quick recap on that before we go on. Full metal jacket used for target and training. Jacketed hollow point or other type material used for personal defense. Those are two things that you need to know just from the start. Also, check your local listings. Looking at you, New Jersey. In New Jersey, you can't use anything but full metal jacket ammunition. They say that the hollow point ammunition is more dangerous and causes so much damage in the bad guy that it's unfair, you can't use it. So apparently New Jersey would rather have the full metal jacket pass all the way through and hit some innocent people farther down the road. Nope, that's editorializing, I'm sorry about that. Sorry, New Jersey, but check your laws to make sure that you are allowed to use jacketed hollow point or frangible ammunition as part of your self-defense plan. So, moving on, I did say, I did mention frangible. This frangible ammo looks a lot like a full metal jacket, but in truth, it is compressed copper powder that is made scientifically, and, and that just means to say that I don't know how. <laughs> scientifically, it is put together so that when this hits human flesh, it returns again to powder and it transfers all of its energy into the target, but you won't get as much penetration as you get from some of the other jacketed hollow point ammunition. But it transfers so much energy. Um, this one is called One Strike. There's a company out there, I don't know if they're still in business, it was Extreme Shock. Um, now it's Allegiance Ammo. There's a couple other things out there. Custom Cartridge out in California making this frangible ammo, which transfers all of its energy, but doesn't give quite as much penetration. Uh, it's it's truly amazing. One of the other side benefits of this, if you miss your target and this hits anything else, it just turns into powder and it's gone and it's not ricocheting and it's not causing any other problems downrange. Let's focus on the jacketed hollow points and all of the different styles and different methods of making the hollow points work. This is a round called the X-Fire. This is a nine millimeter hollow point round. Um, I would call it jacketed hollow point, except that the projectile is solid metal and it is cut. You can see the little cuts down in there. What happens when you shoot X-Fire into human tissue or human tissue equivalent is this. You get dramatic opening, much, much wider than the original nine millimeter base down here. And it still keeps together, so it carries the weight. We're talking about the scientific equation again. You know, the, the weight is transferring energy into the target, but it's opening up and it's, it's giving you much more of a, what we will call a temporary and permanent wound channel. So the temporary wound channel is something that happens really fast when the bullet hits. The permanent wound channel is the actual diameter of the wound into the body. So terminal ballistics is something that people really talk deeply about but um, the truth of the matter is most of what you hear is garbage. Honestly, this is, this is no lie. Somebody posted very recently that a 45 ACP shot into the toe will provide lethal results. No, it will not. The one true thing about handgun cartridges of all calibers is that none of them possess the power that you see in the movies. You are not going to get a guaranteed one shot stop the lightning bolt effect from anything you know, 357 Magnum or 44 Magnum stuff we didn't even put out here, you're not going to get that kind of reaction. That's why we tell you to shoot until the threat stops because you don't know if your ammunition is going to perform as it is supposed to. There are lots of different variables. Critical Defense Ammo from Hornaday will put that forward and let you take a look at that. That is also a jacketed hollow point, but notice there is a polymer insert in the front of that projectile. That polymer insert makes sure that this does not fill up with clothing or other areas because the truth about a full metal, excuse me, the truth about a jacketed hollow point is that it only works, it only opens up like this when 
material gets into the center of the hollow point and pushes the rest of the material out the side. Something like the critical defense round from Hornaday, that makes sure that this doesn't fill up so that you get a much more consistent opening. There's lots of other stuff out there too because everybody is trying to build a better mousetrap to get you to buy ammo. And we're right in the middle of an ammo shortage right now because everybody is buying ammo, so they're buying everything that they can get. This is a polymer-based projectile, so it's not going to expand the same way metal does, but when it hits the target, you see the grooves on the front, they're transferring the energy, it's pushing that projectile to turn in a different direction and move and transfer some of that energy. I don't know how well this works. We've shot it into ballistic gel and seen it just turn and come out the side. Um, so I, I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of the traditional jacketed hollow point or the frangible ammunition. Um, even this stuff like X-Fire, uh, as long as you get the, the good penetration that you're expecting and much more important than that, as long as this functions effectively in your firearm. So grab a few boxes of whatever it is you're going to carry and my plan is to always shoot 200 rounds of my defensive ammo. My gun has to fire 200 rounds without a malfunction, then I consider it reliable enough for me to bet my life on it. One thing you'll notice, well, one last thing we'll talk about as we, as we go forward, this is a 22 caliber ammunition. Most crime scenes, you'll talk to cops, so they end up, yep, uh, 22s were used because they're common, they're ubiquitous, they're everywhere, they're cheap, they're easy to get hold of. You can keep thousands and thousands of 22 rounds with you. Typically, a 22 caliber is a lead round nose. There are a few companies making hollow point 22 caliber ammo, but lead round nose bullets are most often for, like I said before, target shooting and, and things like that. And if you're looking here on the screen, you said, hey, Kevin, what's that one with the red tip? Okay, this was made by American Eagle, um, federal cartridge company, Syntec, Sim, Sim, Syntec, synthetic technical, okay, it's a, it's a polymer covering over the lead bullet which was designed to put less fouling in your barrel so you have to clean your gun less. Again, these are marketing elements. You should clean your gun anytime when you're shooting anyway, but when you're in the store, well, I shouldn't say that now because there's no ammo in the store. When you're shopping online and you see all of these images of ammo, and it probably says sold out right now, there are so many different choices, it can be confusing. But let's break it down to this. Let's recap this for you. The two things you need to know. Full metal jacket for training and target shooting. Jacketed hollow point or frangible ammunition for personal defense. Those are the areas of the breakdown. And look for the proper caliber. It will be stamped on your firearm. It will say nine millimeter para or it will say 40 S and W. There are a few little quirks in there. The Ruger Firearms Company does not call their 40 caliber guns shooting 40 Smith & Wesson ammo. That's what the, the standard name for 40 caliber ammo is, is the 40 Smith & Wesson. Ruger will stamp 40 auto on there because they don't want to put the term Smith & Wesson on a Ruger firearm. But make sure that you are buying the right caliber, the right cartridge for your firearm, and then the right type of projectile for your intended need. So remember that gun giveaway I talked about at the beginning of this video, now is your chance to win. All you've got to do is click on the link, it's down there in the description, or you can click right on this video. You get a chance to win a gun, I can't guarantee that you will win it, but someone will win it. We make sure that people have the right tools to protect themselves. We want you to avoid danger, we want you to be able to save lives. This is how we do it. So no strings attached, click on that, try to win the gun. I'm Kevin Michalowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. Stay safe out there. And hey, if you like these videos, please subscribe to this page, click that notification button. We'll notify you every time we come out with something new. We'll see you in the next video.